I'm Lorelai Day with the City of San Angelo. Today we're here with two members of our Water Department, Andy Basilio and Mike Purcell. Thanks for being here with us today. Thanks for having us. So uh, Andy, let's start with you. Can you uh, talk about the Cross Connection Program, uh, the goal of it and why it's important? Yeah, the Cross Connection Control Program is, is being put in place to help protect the water system, both on the public side, but also on, on the customer side as well. So it's both before the meter and after the meter. And so what the goal of the Cross Connection Control Program is to prevent uh, uh, chemical contaminants or uh, other what are called auxiliary water sources from entering back into the system, possibly causing uh, illness or a change in the, in the water quality. And so with that, um, there's different steps and measures that we are looking at putting in place for this. Uh, some of it includes customer service inspections. We're looking at uh, implementing an ordinance. Uh, we've already adopted a customer service agreement. Uh, so these are some of the types of measures that we're looking at trying to uh, improve our cross-connection control program. I think a, a big question from people might be, why is the city just now addressing this? Can you, can you help us understand that? Well, it has been uh, addressed in the past. So even before the February uh, contamination uh, incident, there were customer service inspections being done uh, through our permits department. Also, we did have some ordinances in place. Since February, uh, we've been working on trying to enhance our program. We've been working with TCEQ. Uh, we've looked at some of the commercial uh, industries, things of that nature up in the Paul Ann area. We've also branched out to other um, potential uh, contaminant sources or areas of concern, I would call them. And so even though a lot hasn't been publicized since February, we have been putting a lot of things in place. Uh, we do have a draft ordinance that's uh, partially complete that we're trying to work through. We've adopted a customer service agreement as previously discussed. And all of these are different measurements that we're trying to put in place to enhance that program to help protect the public. So a lot of these things, you know, they've been going on, it's just that the public might not necessarily see them. That is exactly correct. Mike, moving on to you, um, can you talk about what a CSI is? Okay, a CSI is a customer service inspection. Um, I'm licensed through TCEQ to, be, to do customer service inspections. Um, we go in and look through facilities, as Andy mentioned, um, for backflow instances that we need to protect against. Um, types of chemicals they may have on site, um, the different things that residential or commercial facilities have on site that will, could possibly pollute the water, the city's water along with the people or the water system inside the facility. Can you talk about some of the most common cross connection or backflow uh, issues? Yes, um, the, probably the most common one is, is, and people don't realize it, is your garden hose spigots that are on your homes. Um, people use those to distribute chemicals on their lawns and things like that. Um, they make backflow devices for those. They're called hose bib vacuum breakers. They um, prevent from back siphonage. So that allows, that prevents the chemical that you're spraying on your yard from coming back into your home or possibly into the public water system. Where can you get those devices? Any of your plumbing supply stores, um, your large box stores will also provide those things for you. And they're not very expensive, are they? No, ma'am. They are usually around $10. Okay. I think I saw, I was at Home Depot the other day, I think I saw them for $7. Okay. So you're about right there. <laughs> and there are other sources of contamination that we're trying to protect in addition. You know, that's probably the most prevalent one. Some of the other ones are a lot of it's irrigation systems. And so if somebody uses, say they have a well on their own property or a business has a well, that is a different water source that we can't mix that water. Another one is some people have uh, pumps where they pump out of the river or the lake. And those are, are definitely hazards that we need to protect against as well. So when it comes to inspecting commercial facilities, what are you looking for and what can people expect? First off, we'll start out, we'll call them, let them know that we're coming. Um, we're not going to just bring up on someone unless we have a reason to. Um, but most of the time they'll receive a phone call from us that states that, hey, we need to come and do a customer service inspection at your facility. Um, we'll set up a date and time with you to come and visit. Um, there will be need to, will need to be someone there that we will walk us through the facility. Um, we will start at the meter and we will 
go around the outside, the exterior of the buildings first, and then we will go inside. We'll be looking for types of chemicals that are used within the facility. We'll look for other water sources, as Andy mentioned, wells, um, rivers, you know, streams, anything that they may be using the water from to for their facility. Um, if they have boilers, things like that, we will be investigating the whole water system. I mean, we'll be walking into bathrooms, looking in underneath sinks, making sure there's no, no way that uh, water can come back from the factory, let's say, into the bathroom and contaminate the water system in there. How often are commercial facilities inspected? It will depend on the hazard type mainly, um, with being, we have two types per TCQ as a health hazard or a non-health hazard. Um, so if you have chemicals on site that are considered a high health hazard to the public, you'll probably see us more often than the people that don't. Obviously, like you've already said, backflow issues aren't limited just to commercial facilities. What are, can you talk again about what the types of issues you see in residential homes are? Yes, um, swimming pools are one that people don't consider a health hazard because we have chlorine in our water, but we also have it in our pools, but it's a high level in the pool. Um, a well, if you use a well to irrigate your yard, we have to make sure that it's not tied into the public water system also. If you pump from the rivers or the lake, um, that's, that water is not treated, so it's, it would contaminate the water system. Um, again, the hoses, the hose bibs on your homes, um, water softeners, um, the overflow drain for your water heater, um, things like that are things that we'll be looking at in residentials. In addition to what Mike was saying there, a lot of the potential um, contaminants for residential is the, uh, the sprayers that you can put on the end of a hose. Because a lot of times if we have a, um, and, and most customers don't even think about this, but if you think about it, if we have a, a main break just outside your house, it can create a siphonage event that will actually pull that chemical through the hose, back through the person's plumbing, and possibly back in the system. So there are times where even a small amount of chemical in one of those sprayers can get back into the, in the, the customer's uh, plumbing system and cause potential health problems there too. So if somebody wanted to have their residence inspected, uh, what would they be looking at for cost? There is no cost. Um, we, we're willing to help. Like I mentioned just a while ago, we're, we're, we're willing to help. Um, we want to protect the people. And a lot of people are unaware of the situations that cause backflow instances. So um, anytime that someone has a question or if they feel that they may have an issue, they can call our office and we will definitely set up an appointment and come visit with them. Yeah, and we definitely encourage uh, the public who's interested in protecting their own health and the health of the water system and, and the rest of the people of San Angelo to, to contact us. We're here to help. Now there may be a cost after the inspection is done. Um, some devices need to be tested annually. They don't know that. The customer doesn't know that. So there may be a cost of that. Or if we find that they need a backflow device and it is not on site, there may be a cost of them getting a licensed plumber to come and install those things. Um, so those are, there's no cost from the city, but there could be a cost after the inspection. Andy, can you tell us where people can go for more information? Certainly. You can look on the website. Uh, you can call us at, at the annex here. Uh, you can email Mike or myself, and we are certainly available and willing to help. Last question. Uh, what can citizens expect moving forward with the cross-connection control program? So for the program, what we're currently trying to finish up is some of the inspections for the facilities that, we're, uh, have done, that we've done over the past few months. And once we have them, we're going to branch out to other facilities. Uh, primarily focusing on commercial businesses. Uh, we're also working on the ordinance, which was previously mentioned, trying to have uh, very clear guidelines for what uh, existing or new customers can expect with regard to the uh, backflow uh, prevention you know, between the devices or for um, just how to handle these type of situations. And so we are very excited about the program. We're excited about bringing new folks on and uh, trying to continue working uh, really hard and diligent to try and protect the water system. Okay. Mike, Andy, thanks for being here with us today. For more information, go to cosatx.us.